Good morning. It's a Saturday morning coffee chat. It's April 11th. Yeah. This, this, you know, it's, it's for staying at home and for everything that's going on, it really does. When I look at the date, it, it seems like we're flying by through the year, mm -hmm. um, which is good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> So today we're going to actually just ha have our takeaways on uh, the book that we're reading, Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. um, we decided instead of doing like a coming into the groups and doing a review on what we're hearing, we um, want to just kind of like share this in our coffee chat. Um, so if you're reading along with us, definitely get on the calls with us so you can share your takeaways so we can make it a little more interactive. Um, I, if you read 32 pages a week, you'll get through the entire book in April and May, which we're going to do this for two months. So um, it makes it really doable and you can really um, digest the information and start thinking about how you're going to apply it. And I'm going to post in, um, in our groups this how to create a good habit. And it's just like a checklist cheat sheet um, that goes through the different first law, second law, third law, fourth law which is how he divides up, the author divides up, um, you know, how to make a good habit. And it's really a great structure in which we're gonna talk about structure today. Um, and it's very simple, <clears throat> which is what we like, right? Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just tiny changes that over time, when you consistently do them, create great results. And that's what we want. So it's important that we be intentional about doing this um, because if you're, if you want to achieve something, um, you have to be diligent in taking the action that's going to get you there. Um, you can make a, a habit in 21 to 28 days, but it really takes longer to make that, you know, solidify to make that just something that you do and which Atomic Habits talks about, you know, mm -hmm. it's just creating a system that helps you get to your goals. So that's one of the things I really liked about it. And then, um, Oh, I've highlighted so much in here. And if you guys want to share something that you have taken away from the book. Sure. I, um, oh. to be honest, I just got through the first chapter because it was really, mm -hmm. had to get my mind going into it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is, which is good. Um, what I liked was uh, time magnifies the margin between success and failure. Um, talk about time this morning in the calendar and mm. stuff. And I was really reflecting on time and it all, it is what you make it to be. And um, like the coach business, you can carve out 15 minutes to just to do this, but it could magnify to what you want in that 15 minutes or it's a failure if you just dismissed it and so that's what the intent in your head i was thinking of was time mm -hmm. and then what i really hit me and it always reminds me of autumn calibres is um problem number four goals are are at odds with long-term process it says ultimately it is your commitment to the process that will determine your progress mm. and then i threw in there ultimately it is your commitment and trust to the process that will determine your progress because autumn calibres always says trust the process it's gonna work <laughs> you know yeah, true. And, and that's what I think is like a lot of time there's a commitment, but you got to trust the process that your commitment, it, it'll come. It just, it's not going to be overnight. And uh, that's what I liked. Yeah, I love that. Have you started reading it, Karen? No, it hasn't come yet. I guess oh. it's not on Amazon's priority list. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's unusual, but yeah, so I've been mm -hmm. waiting for it. Cool. You'll, you'll breeze through it um, once you get it. Cause if you're like me and I know you are, you're this way, it's um, you start like, Oh, that's so good. And he just, everything he's talking about, it's like, Oh my gosh, tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. And at um, the very end, he has chapter summary. It's like a, mm. just a synopsis, which is nice to do a quick reference instead of trying to 
go through it all. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then um, just the last thing in you, know, it's in chapter two, um, is uh, the three layers of behavior change. And mm -hmm. so it's, um, it's got this diagram here, right? Mm -hmm. Three levels. And he, most people like look at the outcome and go for that outcome versus focusing on the process, like Deb just okay. talked about. And then at the interior of that circle is identity. So a lot of times we want the thing, we want to have that thing and then we'll do this so that we can be that, right? So we, we get that backward. We need, to, if we, and that's an outcome-based goals and outcome-based habits. Mm -hmm. and we change it to identity-based habits, which means that we become the person that does the thing, the process that achieves the goal. So at the outcome. So it has to be an identi identity-based um, habits. So that's where you trust that process of taking that action, of being the person, okay. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in the next part of just um, having structure in this world of social distancing. So um, yeah. if you don't have the book, highly recommend the book. It's got so many good nuggets in there. Really good food for thought. Um, and something else that I wrote down a while ago that reminds me of is learn what you need to know to keep from going back again, yeah. right? So a lot of times we get in this rut of starting and stopping um, and then beating ourselves up for it. And then, and then it's that cycle. It's called the diet cycle um, for a lot of times with our nutrition, which this happens. And so then we are, get to that place where we're just frustrated again. It's like, okay, I got to start. So then we start and you know then we get frustrated and we stop yeah. um so it really is focusing on you and the process and then you achieve the outcome so love it love it love it mm -hmm. okay so let's just talk a little bit about like in this time where we're all at home and our total our schedule and our structure is just totally thrown out the window mm -hmm. um and, and how do we kind of maintain our sanity in what's going on right now? Especially if you're quarantining at home, your world has become super, super small. The things that we took for granted, I know myself, like, you know, um, just going out and going to the coffee house and meeting up with friends and going to meetings and things like that. You know, I can't do that. And that just will mentally throw you in a, tail, a world spin. So it's, it's, it's recognizing that first. And just um, processing that, if you have to journal about it, that's always good. It's always good to write. So <clears throat> write down your thoughts and just get them out of your head. Otherwise, they're just going to keep swirling around in your head and write them out. And then you can, you'll be able to see. And what's happened in my experience is when I do that, things that I don't even like, consciously think drop out on the paper. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And it really helps me to have a different perspective. I heard a quote yesterday, our perspective is either our power or our prison. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to make that choice. And we have to, if we feel like we're in prison, if that's our perspective, we need to really um, flip it and find the blessings in, you know, what's, what's in our world right now and what we can take away from it and how we can you know, make it to our advantage that we have this time at home and what can we do to you know, make it the best and take advantage of that and um, come out of this even stronger and um, you know, maybe even redefining yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I did a post yesterday, you know, it's like we do have this opportunity to reset right now and really reflect on our life and what, what, it's, going, what, what it's going to look like when we return to normalcy and what we want it to look like. And then so what do we have to who do we have to become? What is the process we have to take right now to achieve those outcomes when we do get that, that freedom back you know, <laughs> to be able to just roam freely and gather with people and go back to our normal routines, right? Mm -hmm. We have this opportunity to refine that. So, so do some reflection on that. And mm -hmm. again, journaling is, is so therapeutic and beneficial. Um, and then there's just like, as far as time structure, um, you know, just a couple of tips are, um, you know, in the beginning when this first happened, like I spent so much time on Facebook. I hardly ever get on Facebook and scroll the feed. 
you know? Um, and I was, I found myself like totally on Facebook because I was getting a lot of information there and it's like, man, I need to quit. <laughs> I need to quit that, you know, but we, in, when we're uncertain, we want answers. We want information. Mm -hmm. So that's natural, but you know, um, we have to recognize when that's becoming too much and, and you're just, that's all that you're filtering into your brain. You have to flip that around. Yeah. Um, you know, be conscious or intentional about checking the news. You got to be aware of what's going on in your community, mm -hmm. but then, you know, that's it, right? Don't be, make that something that you're constantly checking and tuning into because that just feeds your psyche. That just feeds your mindset. And it's, it's not really healthy. Um, cause you, as you know, and Deb just posted about this, you know, we have to nourish our minds, um, to have a healthy body. We have to have a healthy mind. So definitely taking a break from the social media and even the TV, you know, um, initially it feels like when we're at home, it's just like, I've got this, this break from responsibility and it's okay to take that rest time and be on the, you know, we, we watch TV every night, but, um, you know, if it's something that you're binge watching and you're day after day after day, definitely um, we know that's unhealthy. And it may be that like through the, through the um, stages of grief, it may be just, okay, that's what you were doing. Now it's time to, you know, stop that and start getting into a more healthy routine. So creating that daily routine. So a couple tips here are just to bookend your days, have your morning routine, have your evening routine. And we started the year out with our morning, miracle morning. So that gives you some great tips on that. Um, and I'll share in a post here, just, you know, what that looks like, the savers. And then having your evening routine, right? Um, looking out, um, you know, doing a gratitude at night is good. Reflecting on, you know, what went on during the day and how you're feeling. Because you've got to stay in tune with that. Like thinking about what tomorrow, what you want to do, you can either do that at night or do it in the morning. Um, but, and, you know, maybe having, doing some of your reading, read some pages from your book that's going to just end the day on a positive note. Um, and then also um, scheduling your meals so that during your day, you have that structure, right? And I shared about this, like I eat 6 a.m., 10, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m., um, and that just kind of helps me give a structure in my day. Um, so like we're at home and it feels like we can just eat all the time. Right. And mm -hmm. we are eating more out of boredom and anxiety and the emotions. But if you have that structured time, then you can question, you know, um, check in with yourself. Like, okay, it's not really time to eat. I just ate like an hour ago. <laughs> Do yeah. I am I really hungry? Why am I eating? And then again, journaling about that in your logbook, you know, um, just how the emotions are going and how you're reacting. And, you know, and if you do eat, just try to make sure it's the healthiest choice you can. Um, and then also at the, when you do your morning routine, just picking a couple of things you want to get done for the day, whatever that is. Maybe you want to start planting some seeds for, you know, when the weather's better, especially for Karen and I, <laughs> and we can actually make a garden. Um, you know, or some crafts that you wanted to do, or like Karen did and totally decluttered her closet. That was awesome. Nice. That looked so good. And I, and see, and I, I felt good looking at her pictures. I'm like, I know when I do something like that, how good that feels when I get it done. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, one, you accomplish something. And two, like you got rid of the old stuff and you've cleaned it up and you can just look at the work that you did and feel good about that. So it's good to, you know, pick a couple of things like that that you want to do to help you stay productive in the day. And if you're working from home, you know, make sure you have that time blocked out in your day when you're going to sit down and focus on, on your work and make sure if you've got family around that you're, you know, letting them know, um, mommy's got our work hat on, right? You know, and so um, most of us don't have that problem with having to tell the family, <laughs> but sometimes. Um, <laughs> You know, and then the last thing is just maintaining a regular sleep schedule. That is super important and something um, I'm really struggling to get my kid to do. And he's like, mom, we just, we got to adapt. This is unprecedented times and we're going through this. And why is it important that I even get up when you say I should get up because there's nothing else to do, you know? And I said, yeah, we do have to adapt, but we have to do it in a healthy way. 
because yeah. we are going to come out of this and we need to have, you know, maintain some healthy habits mm -hmm. through this all because what we do now is going to reflect what happens when, you know, things return to normal. So mm -hmm. it's important to be very conscientious and intentional about what you do now. These habits that you're establishing now are going to be, you know, things that you're going to carry into what happens <laughs> when we, when we get to go, you know, from the world. So, so those are my tips. Um, if you guys have any, that would definitely please share. I think I was, um, when you were talking, I remember you were mentioning, I forgot which conversation, but just do something for an hour, you know, an hour's build up. And so if you're tackling something, just do it for an hour and walk away. Like, like being on Facebook, do it for an hour and then just put it away, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and like I committed myself and I'm blessed to be here in Arizona, but I've been trimming a bush, you mm. know, just trimming it down, getting the dead stuff because it's all prickly. <laughs> Very careful yeah. um, because I don't, I don't know what that plan is. So, but just doing one bush a day or you know, yeah. whatever, just one tackle one thing a day and then you're good. And so yeah. I'm trying to give myself that grace and, um, and uh, satisfaction that I've done something productive, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. instead of wallowing in something different and then emotional eating. So. Oh, that is an awesome tip. Um, yeah. because it can be hard to get started. It can be hard yeah. to just, you know, do something. And if you just say, okay, even, even 15 minutes, you know, right. it's like, I'm going to go do this for 15 minutes. And usually once you get started, um, and then you start feeling good, like it's going to flip a switch with you mentally when you start becoming productive or moving your body or, you know, reading something, um, and then, and you'll want to do more, but it takes that. Um, so movement creates momentum, momentum creates motivation, motivation comes from within. Yeah. So you have to start. And even if it's just baby, like baby steps are great. So 15, if you can commit to, I'm just going to do it for 15 minutes, like, and then I can be done. And if, if you're done after 15 minutes, then fine, you know, but at least you've, you've done something. And then maybe Save next day you do 20 minutes or the next time you do 20 minutes. Like, yeah, it gets yeah. joy, gets built up and it reminds me of the savers. Mm. You know his structure. Yeah. But you seem to be doing good on that, Karen. Aren't you on your miracle morning? Oh, I haven't <laughs> been doing it. I'm like, I'm not a good example. I'm a good example of uh, what happens when you don't do all the things except for yesterday. Um, yeah. But I'm so used to working. So I'm this whole being at home is not so I'm used to working. So then in the evening, then I can be on my phone or my mm -hmm. iPad or watch TV and mm -hmm. relax, but I'm not used to spending the whole day at home. So all my, those worst habits have come out. Um, I'm still, I've still been working out and mostly watching what I eat, but yeah, I've totally, well, I, plus I've been sleeping in, which is, I feel like I needed the sleep, but also then it sort of messes with my whole morning routine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yes, you feel better when you do those things. And yesterday mm -hmm. was a much better day. So that only took me all week to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, I was like, okay, enough of this. And um, yeah, I was busy all day. So I felt much better. And I didn't want to get in my closet, but I've been trying to do that for months. Mm, I was go. part of a, a fashion group. And the first thing we were supposed to do was clean our closet. And I never did it. So oh. <laughs> now it's done. So yes, it does. It does help a lot. If, yeah. if I can do things. So that's, that's a good thing um, that like, cause Karen has been working. She has yes. up until just this last week, she had this normal structure of going to work, yep. you know, and coming home. Um, but now she's on two, 14 days of stay at home. And so initially when we're into that stay at home, that's how it is. Like your mindset, just your, your mind, your body, you're like, I don't know what to do. It can be confusing. It can be 
um, you know, especially because of all the uncertainty and everything. So yeah, that like that you're going to go through that process of, eh, I'll just, you know, do whatever. And I don't feel like doing anything and I'm just going to relax and, um, which is okay. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at some point you do have to like get up, <laughs> do something well, more productive yeah. and feel better about it. And because, because, um, well, Karen, I think you're just on a 14 day stay at home from work. Right. Right. But you're going to go back to, to your routine and some people are, yeah. don't have that end date. It's like, right. I, I'm not sure when I'm going back to work. I'm not sure when I'm going to not be in quarantine or self-isolation or stay at home, you know, mandates. So it's even more important to establish a routine um, because you're in, a, in this for the longer, like staying at home period, which is where we can get stuck and start really falling into those bad habits. So unhealthy habits. All right. Well, ladies, thanks for getting on. I'm going to stop the recording.